Уважаемые дамы и господа, мы хотя бы время обидеть. gentlemen, we we start, we continue our work. So our session is called Digital Security. Oh no, I'm sorry. A digital transformation of the fields of economy and the new approaches to ensuring information security. And I'm going to moderate this section, Alexander Zhukov from the, from the organizing committee of the Info Forum. Unfortunately, uh, Mr. Maslov couldn't make it to uh, Hantemansisk and he's sending his best regards from Moscow. He is with us. And since we, in this session, we have a lot of uh, uh, reports from other countries and cities, so please keep to the timetable so that everybody has the opportunity to uh, to speak. So the first uh, speech is by Dmitry Vyatkin from Megafon. Approach of Megafon to information security. So here you go. Uh, good afternoon, dear colleagues, uh, dear colleagues via video conferencing. I'm glad to welcome you. So the topic is the Megaphone's approach to information security. My name is uh, Dmitry Vyatkiv. I'm a manager on uh, implementation of digital solutions. So uh, our this is the brief uh, content. These are the realia, the ecosystem of Megaphone. And some of our latest services, Megaphone Pentest, uh, Megaphone Security Awareness, uh, Megaphone DLP system on managing the workplaces and protection of database. So like I told you, the real and the requirements uh, in, uh, were and the news from the previous sessions are not very uh, bright. Uh, for example, the the the, uh, the breach in Colonian pipeline it has it had been hacked into before, and the leakage of a password of one of the staff. Um, and the the employee uh, who didn't work in this uh, company, he sold it to the dark net, and so it went on and on. Uh, so the colleagues. The, the, the criminals from Darknet could download this uh, uh, password and they could go into the system and thus uh, managing to to disrupt the work of this company. And the shocking news is that the, such um, institutions like hospitals are under uh, cyber attack, like one hospital in Florida had to go into manual mode because of a cyber attack. And it's, uh, it's old news from GBS company producing meat. Uh, there was a plant who produced like 25% of all the meats in in America. They fought the cyber criminals for a long time, but still paid $11 million to unblock the system. So some statistics, uh, according to the Global Risk Report 2020, 
uh, the 2020 cyber attacks in 2020 are more influential and the statistically more likely to happen in the world rather than as compared to even terrorist attacks. Let's look at 2021. As you can see, the situation uh, has not changed a lot. Only the um, infectious diseases, uh, the situation is uh, have progressed. The cyber attacks are almost at the same place. And, and the news tell that in the recent four months, the number of cyber attacks have, uh, has grown by 30%. The ecosystem of Megaphone's cybersecurity uh, takes into account all the aspects. This is the web infrastructure, DDoS attacks, and WAF and web applications and firewalls. These are big projects like DLP systems that we introduce into the industry to protect the uh, um, businesses against all sorts of attack from inside. Uh, there is uh, there are insiders. There are like you know accidental. Um, uh, interaction when sending information from one part of organization into the and leakages, but we can't trust our staff 100% because the human factor, uh, uh, like in the phishing presentation, is very important. Expert services, these are the testing for being protected and, and the control and the security awareness. So we track your company, we check your company from outside and from inside. And we have an opportunity to, to conduct all sorts of audits, thanks to which we could uh, make an audit on according to stack compliance and FZ152 about the provision of uh, personal data. And, and so we have the protection for the mobile devices and and also protection uh, from cyber surveillance and intelligence. Uh, it would be especially important for the banking sector. Megaphone pen test, uh, or we could also do audits of uh, the security systems. Uh, this pen test by Megaphone includes testing for intrusion uh, and also the check of uh, being pr protection of Wi-Fi and web applications and audit of compliance uh, to requirements of the regulators to all sorts of laws and uh, regulations in terms of critical infrastructure protection. And also we provide red teaming. Our staff are qualified and participate in all sorts of back bounty campaigns and they accumulate their expertise. Okay, let's go on. Based on the work with the pen test, we provide a description of the surface of attacks. We make a description of how we are going to attack this or that uh, business and we uh, approve this and we show all our skills and we actualize the model and after all the necessary tests we uh, and including even the social engineering, like influencing the employees, we show the influence and the vulnerabilities in the system. After that, we could have uh, additional te uh, additional testing pen test and give a um, certificate of passing the pen test. This is the prevention which is uh, necessary in our time as the news show at the beginning of my speech. Uh, Megaphone SA, security awareness, like our colleague from, from the previous section promised, phishing and malware are influencing or even affecting negatively the work of the company and and the staff of the companies, the employees who are not aware of cyber attacks and in the present reality and the situation in the world. So what do we propose? A training platform for with uh, training courses and test uh, tasks and additionally 
there is an opportunity to organize phishing against your own staff. Um, and after completing this test, uh, for example, after a week or two, we organize through this platform a phishing attack and there, the, there is a categorizing of the um, actions of the employees, whether they click the link or when they uh, went uh, onto the malware website and to, uh, entered their personal data. So you could test it in different ways and we would show the results the risk ratio of the department or of the whole business so this system is universal you could have the fire security tests or labor safety things uh, megaphone dlp uh, this is the prevention Apart from prevention, we have to have uh, a tight uh, control over the staff because uh, the staff can uh, may not accidentally pass the data or leak the data outside. How can this uh, system help us? The security policies within this system allow to control and check all the critical aspects of this business, of this or that business. And this system, you could have uh, regulating regulation on based on some documents. Uh, when when somebody gets uh, an attachment or some when downloading some document onto the USB stick, it could block or it could alarm of the IT specialist uh, from the security department and block the threat at the business, at the enterprise level. So there are some system of control and the audit over uh, the staff. So the bad person could be not the person who downloaded the document. It could be a whole chain of uh, malicious uh, employees uh, in this or that enterprise. And they could ask somebody else to to, at this or that moment to, to send via email or via smartphone some important data. And this system of detection allows to um, conduct such investigations for the IT security stuff. Briefly, DLP, what does it allow? Uh, not only dealing with USB, uh, but it's also the managing the access policies, the analysis of effectiveness, the complete monitoring of the system, and the control of the main nodes, and even IP telephony, VOIP telephony. Megaphone, uh, uh, protection of databases. This system is uh, based on DLP. It's very uh, convenient interface, which allows you the full control of the database uh, only where when introducing the system. Megaphone DLP, me Megaphone uh, protection of database checks the enterprise for any possible uh, uh, malware and uh, differing uh, access policies and access to databases. So very convenient interface. The uh, system automatically detects new databases and positions them, whether they are personal data or data related to the production system. It's always uploaded uh, the new database detection, new ports opening and uh, changes of IPs. So there's also control over the, over the uh, employees who have complete access, administrative access, and uh, check the, the expediency of work and on the AI, based on AI, allow to analyze the approach of this or that um, uh, enterprise, uh, this or that employee. 
when dealing with this uh, database, if there is uh, more database uh, uploaded or uh, the database is not used properly, all the alarms come to the IT uh, security specialist and the employee is blocked. So this complete uh, protection of databases and the control over system administrators. And this is completely Russian solution certified by STEC uh, according to the personal protection, uh, personal detail protection. So this is all. Thank you very much for your attention. If you are interested, I could also demonstrate a demo on the stands uh, for these services and uh, tell you more about our systems. Thank you very much. Thank you, a powerful company. The topic is very interesting. I believe that for the future, we should have a separate panel with your participation. And then probably we could ask plenty of questions. Uh, thank you. Uh, it was great to listen to you. And now we give the floor to a representative of Sberbank, Andrei Niznamov, candidate of science, managing director of Artificial Intelligence Center, Center of Competence, Artificial Intelligence. Uh, chairman of Intergovernmental uh, Consultative Group of Special Committee on AE of the Council of Europe. Thank you, dear colleagues. I will be brief. And uh, I will uh, not uh, show any presentation. I wanted to say a few words of what is going on internationally in terms of regulating IE. It's an important topic, open uh, any news portal, and you will find some information about what is proposed to do in the sphere of artificial intelligence. Heads of governments of our country, foreign countries are speaking. Uh, now, practically every uh, two years, uh, every government body is concerned about uh, regulating uh, artificial intelligence. The Organization of Economic Security and Cooperation uh, is an, an initiator of this process. They have developed the principles of ethical development of artificial intelligence technology, uh, which later has become part of G20 uh, declaration. Uh, two key platforms who are working on that, if you are interested, get acquainted with what they're doing. This is UNESCO. Let me remind you, this is a specialized institution uh, which uh, focuses on uh, culture, but they also uh, work with science. UNESCO developed the first in the world global recommendation on artificial intelligence ethics. They are available in Russian as well. Uh, in the draft recommendations, there were over 150 points. Only the first quarter uh, was focusing on ethics. All uh, other uh, is the tough control measures to control its uh, compliance. Uh, another platform is the Council of Europe. In the Council of Europe, they set up a special committee on artificial intelligence. They are developing the first European convents. Uh, I had the intergovernmental uh, consultation group. Uh, we had several consultations this year. We are summing up the uh, effects, and probably next year we will have draft of this. A uh, single European convention which would form set of rules for the development of AI technology. If you are interested, join into this uh, effort. There is also a number of other international bodies and uh, organizations are also within the contents of cybersecurity, and I'm very happy uh, that this topic is now concerned, uh, discussed uh, by CIS. Uh, countries together with the modal code. Uh, very recently, as you've heard, there was an initiative to discuss this topic at BRICS level. We're also happy to support it. And we believe that that would be an effective and a sufficient answer to the challenges in that area. And uh, major Western uh, countries and Asian countries, Japan, uh, Korea, for instance, and China, uh, 
uh, are working on that. And this is a very good demonstration of the formation of an alliance in the sphere of artificial intelligence. Uh, there are also several bilateral declarations, for instance, UK and US uh, declarations are on the basis of EU. Uh, the purpose is to join the efforts in the development of artificial intelligence, uh, which uh, is connected or touches upon any subject of the presentations here. Whatever we mention in terms of new te technologies, we are talking about AE. So in this very brief presentation, I wanted to invite everyone who is somehow related, involved with the topic of artificial intelligence, please join us. Uh, I am bypassing the issue of ethics and regulation in Russia. If you are seriously planning to work on that, then it is very important to understand what rules of the game uh, will be established in the nearest months. Uh, they will be set. Therefore, if you are interested, please contact us. Thank you. Thank you very much for finding time uh, because this topic is really, really interesting. Now we have a presentation uh, based on video report from India. We have a, uh, Mr. Nutt, Executive Director, Center for the Development of Prospective Calculations from the Ministry of Electronics uh, from India. And uh, uh, greetings from India to the wonderful people of Kanti Mansisk and Russia in general. Uh, it's indeed a pleasure for me to address this informed gathering here on digital transformation and information security and Indian perspective. Uh, increase of digitization enabled by prolifer uh, prolific use of internet and smartphone is being widely seen across the globe. Wider proliferation of devices and evolving 5G and dynamic and programmable networking paradigms through software defined networks are changing the paradigms of data access and security. This calls for a comprehensive approach to device, novel and intelligent techniques across hardware, firmware, systems, protocols, middleware and applications. Hence, it is required to develop adaptive and advanced security techniques with proactive and self-healing capabilities. India has accelerated the adoption of ICT across various sectors for effective governance, predictive analytics, proactive decision making, intelligence backed systems, spatial temporal analysis, location aware services, etc. across government departments, critical sectors, law enforcement agencies, defense, societal applications in the areas of education, agriculture and health. Now I will take you through my presentation. Uh, firstly, before anything uh, is done, uh, there has to be a motivation and need. So the need for proactive security arises from all these factors. Cybersecurity failure costs continue increasing as very high profile uh, challenges are involved. The basis of proactive security is always strategic based on military principles of taking the fight to the threats. Now to defend and increase resilience against the effects of advanced persistent threats, next generation deceptive technologies for combating the advanced attacks. Then Gartner is even predicted that by 2025, 75% of enterprise generated data will be created and processed at the edge, which will be dollar 43.4 billion by 2027. SaaS based applications recording a growth of 33% as compared to the previous year's data. Markets forecast that software defined network market to grow from US dollar 8.8 .8 billion in 2018 to 28.9 billion by 2023 and audited assessment as proactive security recording growth of 42%. Now these are the technical challenges ahead. We already have a lot of cyber security and information security systems in place. But in order to address whatever challenges I have just enumerated in the previous slides, we need to do something more than what we have. So therefore, there is a need for attack modeling. There is a need for encrypted and encoded traffic 
analysis at a very high speed investigating complex tools to reduce false positives and false negatives collecting intelligence and data across global nodes because the most of the computing is going towards the nodes assess the vulnerability detection capabilities and grade them on some scales so that systems will be exactly known by their security grade so we have to have some universal system in place and unified framework and dashboards for cyber security now focus areas and targets for proactive security threat monitoring and detection frameworks for enterprise networks edge security solution and frameworks ai based siems vulnerability and exploit research ecosystems automated cyber security assessment frameworks threat intelligence and analysis frameworks and to tell you that cdac to the organization whom i belong which is center for development of advanced computing it specializes in high performance computing systems and we have devised a param shavak system which means param is our parallel machine uh, the way it began in 1988 and shavak is a cub so it is a super computer in a box it comes in a desktop variant which does not require too many environmental conditions like data centers and all and we have devised a software defined network based solution based on our own operating system variant called bharat operating system next generation firewall audit and assessment tools based on this param shavak we are also coming up with intermediate 100 teraflop systems which are having all the data center components inbuilt into the racks for uh, these kind of systems to be built we are working on ai based siem features which monitor all end devices integration and scalability automated workflow regulatory compliance ai based ueba and unified platforms so <clears throat> systems and network secu uh, security solutions what are the deliverables expected we we expect indigenous network and perimeter security solutions and test beds we expect secure cloud and virtualization platforms we requ we require secure and trustworthy identity and access management systems we require secure operating systems which are enterprise wide and applications based on them now let me speak about some of the solutions we have implemented in india as cdac under the ministry of electronics and information technology government of india so this was a solution we had done way back when e governance was being rolled out uh, across the country it is a wider adoption of the it based solutions for effective governance and the key initiatives that fuel the r and d and innovation in india that include the digital india the make in india which is called the atmanirbhar or self dependent india and skill india now as part of the digital india the india stack has been developed with open apis and frameworks and the key solutions are the national level online authentication which is called the aadhaar which is a universe universal id which is given to the citizens of india and e praman now e praman is something which is called an authentication system so whenever you are making use of any government websites or any government services you are redirected to this e praman framework which authenticates you based on four factors and then gets you back so that you don't have to you know keep uh, having login ids and passwords in all the government websites just one authentication through e praman would you get you get you through to all the government services which you are using and then we have devised a system which gives out non repeatable one time electronic signatures which are ac accepted across all government systems now this is e praman which i told you and uh, it works on the mobile uh, uh, seva also the uh, the mobile uh, governance uh, platform which we have built and here is e sign it enables online signing facility and it is recognized under the it act 2000 which is well in line with the global standards of all the information technology acts across the world and it provides an effective method for providing governance solutions to organizations and citizens and it is based on authentication of from the universal id system which we talked about which is called aadhaar 
it is well known globally and uh, i think it's a very well very well uh, secure and a, a well used system so it is widely adopted for various sectors such as governance banking education health and so on and so forth then you have the ai enabled credit uh, decision system ai credits which helps in assessing your uh, credit worthiness in a smarter way so that uh, more and more people can be uh, given the loan facility uh, because uh, today the credit systems are denying loan facility to a lot of people since they are based on uh, parameters which uh, uh, which which are not smart enough which are not ai enabled so this one would would make uh, the credit decision system ai enabled and also secure then you have the blockchain so the motivation has come from uh, all the governments which have already adopted the blockchain frameworks uh, and uh, the cosmos the polka dot ai aion and all these blockchain frameworks which are already in existence so india is developing a unified blockchain framework which is a cross domain application and deployment addressing the performance scalability interoperability and security and privacy and also this blockchain framework is interoperable across all the known blockchain frameworks through the transport layer we are also addressing a uh, uh, very uh, potent threat which is emerging now because of the uh, wide use of the iot devices uh, in securing these iot devices because in case these iot devices are manipulated or hacked through them the 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 backend systems can also be accessed so there is there is a move to use blockchain for the security of this entire iot framework which is coming on um, uh, all across globally in the form of cameras and end edge devices and a lot many edge devices iot applications which are coming up you know traffic control systems and so many so many other systems which are coming up so there is there are uh, ai based systems and device data log analysis for anomaly detections hash based uh, dynamic firmware integrity checks and embedded uh, sim uh, which is the root certificate based security so with that i have come to the end of my presentation although uh, we could have gone on but uh, the time given to me was 10 minutes so once again thank you very much it's a great pleasure to have addressed this very informed gathering and international gathering and uh, once again the greetings to all the wonderful people of russia of khanti mansisk namaste thanks a lot I believe uh, it was interesting. Uh, that's India. It's BRICS. Uh, they are professionals, and uh, you uh, can uh, look up uh, in uh, your grand IT forum. You can find the content and find the contact information of that person and start cooperating with him. I believe it's very interesting. Uh, our and now we have uh, another connection uh, from uh, another country that's belarus uh, the presentation uh, will be not on the, in the form of video it will be just remote participation uh, pavel andrianov a representative uh, of border guard of belarus and the experience of training uh, to the use of biometric technologies uh, in the public sector uh, thank you uh, for inviting us thank you for inviting us to participate in your forum but uh, bearing in mind uh, as I, I believe judging from the presentation our time frame is uh, very restricted i will try to be brief uh, let me uh, split my presentation into two parts. Uh, first part would be focused on the development uh, globally, and the second part would be the development of biometric technology uh, domestically in the Republic of Belarus. This will be done on the example of the public sector and uh, in the border guard service. Uh, my name is Pavel Adrianov. I represent uh, the Border Guard Service of the Republic of Belarus. 
Uh, biometric technology is actively integrated in all spheres throughout the world, and now this technology of bioidentification is an integral component of a global market and a convenient instrument to address many tasks. Uh, we uh, identify two stages uh, in the system of biodata, and there's a static biodata, unique uh, uh, science, unique attributes received from birth, uh, like DNA, fingerprints, and so on, uh, and dynamic uh, biometric uh, data, the characteristics which were acquired in time and could change with age or under the effect of external forces. Uh, for instance, the gait, the voice, uh, and so on. According to the projections uh, to 2022, uh, the market of biometric technology would grow at 16%, and the market volume would grow to 40 million US dollars. Uh, in the global market of biometric system, we actively use the technology of identification of the following biometric da data, uh, like fingerprints, face, uh, the uh, voice, uh, uh, geometry of palm, DNA, uh, and uh, according to the focus in the market of technology, the identification by fingerprints will grow slower than uh, other uh, technologies. Uh, the fastest uh, growing market uh, would be the identification uh, by the pattern of beans in the palm. Uh, in accordance with international classification, we may identify the following key segments of a biometric technology. This is public sector, electronic uh, document uh, flow, national biometric programs, and the system of national security. Uh, the uh, following sector would be travel and migration, electronic visas, uh, uh, all biometric systems, uh, which are used in the objects of uh, transportation infrastructure. And the following uh, most uh, developed market is banking, insurance, health service, uh, retail, uh, and uh, so on. Uh, corporate use uh, for information security and the uh, time uh, bit time taking uh, the uh, primary factor for the development uh, of the development is state insurance. Uh, practically in all developed countries, uh, biometry is used uh, for passport control, biometric passport, visa verification, uh, migration uh, control, and so on. Uh, the first to introduce biometric passports was the United States, and the uh, Congress of the U.S. has passed a law in accordance the, uh, to which uh, the citizen of many countries which had agreement on visaless remote with the USA uh, could enter USA on the basis of all biometric uh, data. Uh, in US, biometry is actively used in the systems of security. And the next, and the next state is Canada. Uh, from 93, Canada uses identification by fingerprints. Uh, ca Canadian Border Service Agency is using it from 2017. Uh, they uh, introduced identification by IRIS. Uh, they invested over $300 million uh, US to introduce biometric technology in the future. And uh, now uh, people uh, have to provide biometry, the people of 29 countries. Uh, the number of these countries will grow to 94 in time. Mexico in 2011 has also started uh, the program of issuing electronic ID cards. The chips of those ID cards have information about fingerprints, iris, uh, and they have the program of biometric passports, which is being improved. Also, Mexico is uses in its electron documents uh, within the uh, programs of vote ID uh, and uh, 
the empirical documents. Uh, on the basis of biometric documents. Uh, United Kingdom, the market of biometric system in the United Kingdom is very developed. Uh, more and more states. Uh, uh, the border control service of the United uh, Kingdom. Can you hear me now? Okay. Let me uh, move on very quickly. Let us move to Europe. Okay, now we have sound. Uh, we also have... Uh, thank you. Uh, also, let us skip uh, the key countries. Uh, I also wanted to say a few words about India. I heard from the previous presentation and they have one of the most developed biometric systems. Unfortunately, no sound again. Very poor internet connection. And they have registered over 1 billion people, which is over 90% of the people. In Russia, active introduction of biometry started in 2015. Uh, before it was used in 2015, and uh, a new type of passport uh, contains biometric data. Let us move on to the Republic of Belarus. In 2021, Belarus has completed preparation to introduce biometric documents. Uh, for the purpose of introducing the system uh, of increased trust uh, and uh, higher protection of the national documents and simplification of border control. And the task of introduction. Sorry, very poor internet connection. 
uh, the task was identification uh, and check of validity of documents. Uh, the uh, three tasks which we had the first to organize uh, the ID cards of biometric passports in Belarus, the second task uh, to uh, ensure remote uh, communication uh, with the people and the third uh, to uh, create uh, the service space uh, for the people to be able to get services with the help of those cards. Uh, with regard to the first uh, task, we have created a center of personalization of this card's creation of infrastructure for collection of biometric data. Uh, you can see how it was organized and the creation of the national identification uh, body. Uh, with regard to the second task, uh, we have implemented the formation of individual approach to identification of the people. We have created a system uh, which included uh, 100 providers of these services, uh, a layer of integration, identification, and the users of data, main providers, uh, the layer of providers uh, where the public bodies uh, with their uh, information uh, systems, uh, the uh, single state registration of legal entities, uh, and the information systems uh, with working with the people as part of the system. Uh, integration lay ensures the interface and active communication between the state bodies and the citizen uh, by means of a single technological environment. It ensures uh, this uh, platform is supported by integration application and graphic application personal certificate of the card owner. The task uh, on example of issues of uh, uh, to give you a very light example when a person using an ID card may go to a pharmacy and with the help of ID card, uh, and, uh, um, could medicine could be bought because the card would refer uh, to the government information system, uh, perform identification of the person, uh, verification with the personal register, it is organized uh, on sector level uh, and uh, the use uh, by the customer using electronic procedure. Uh, also, we have automated workplaces uh, which are responsible for issuance of passports. Uh, registration of an individual ID card with five parameters, uh, standard uh, data, uh, then uh, we also have a description of soft and hardware uh, platform, a registration in the national certification system and communication with the government information systems. And step by step, uh, description of its practical use from the beginning of this year. Lost internet connection again. But nonetheless, Yes, it's difficult for me to talk without a personal contact. Let us move on to the work of Border Control Authority. 
Uh, from the first part of my presentation, you could see that mostly we are talking about the countries of North America and in general, Western countries, their development uh, uh, was developed from the public sector to private sector. If we are taking our market, Russian Federation and Belarus, uh, this started from the development of banking sphere, retail marketing and so on. Uh, so they were the first to collect bi biometry and only then moved to the public sector. That's why it took longer time because we had to prepare high quality infrastructure for those tasks. And there is also a psy psychological point because the person, uh, people were used to use the passports and uh, they uh, did not want to switch to ID cards. Uh, what the border control is doing, uh, one of the areas of our specialization is protect the security of the border. Uh, we've been working with ID cards from 2008. Uh, we do not have any problems with processing of this data. And in principle, uh, uh, if we are taking the narrow sphere, a border control, and uh, hence our automated system, uh, which is meant for accumulation of information uh, on the issues of entry and exit of people to the Republic of Belarus. Uh, this system is more or less universal. Uh, owing to this system, uh, we learned how to uh, control uh, the uh, people uh, who come uh, to the public events, for instance, the World Cup, uh, our hockey cup, uh, sorry, that was a very good experience in interaction uh, with the Russian Federation, then uh, a World uh, Football uh, Cup uh, fan ID, uh, probably you remember that, and the citizen of neighboring states who wanted to come to the Russian Federation crossed our border using your uh, tickets and your ID cards. And uh, that was organized on a very high level and other events of uh, that uh, public events of that time. Uh, all this is organized by our ecosystem. It consists of three levels, first border control, then border term, and the uh, control points. And uh, we were lucky in some sense because we have a company that produces hard and software for verification of document that's regular uh, company, uh, the control and verification of instruments. You are all known, familiar with this. The market uses this actively. They have a large network of offices in Brazil, in USA, in the Russian Federation, uh, production facilities in Latvia, very strong research potential. And of course, in that sense, In that sense, we've been very lucky um, and they're lucky as well because there are uh, people, staff of border control who is actively testing their equipment. Our latest uh, novelty was the system of passport control in addition to verification of documents. Uh, we are taking uh, information about the faces of the people and we are matching the face with the data of the passport. We have the system of face recognition at control points. The results of the testing you can see on screen. Uh, we like it uh, very much and we are testing it actively and uh, it is useful not only for us, uh, but to the Russian Federation as well, because we have common service and I do hope and that and this fruitful cooperation uh, will get stronger in years. Thank you for invitation to participate in this forum. Thanks a lot. We apologize uh, for interruptions uh, with internet connection, but it's a thunderstorm, it may happen. Let us check our connection with India. 
We have a presentation by Professor Ashish Ghosh from Indian Statistical Institute, uh, the head of Center for AI and Machine Based Learning. Indian. Yes. Uh, hello, good morning, good afternoon. Uh, this is Ashish Ghosh uh, from Indian Statistical Institute. I'll be giving you a brief on the innovation hub uh, that's very recently established at the Indian Statistical Institute, Kolkata, on data science, big data analytics, and data curation, and along with its security issues. Now, India government has uh, taken up a big mission uh, to establish some innovation hubs on interdisciplinary cyber physical system. So as you know that CPS has become very popular nowadays uh, where we have uh, plenty of devices uh, connected together to uh, make it a self-sufficient digital system. Now under that mission, uh, India government has established 25 uh, such centers. And the, our center is basically aimed to do research on data science, big data analysis, data curation, and related to security issues. So what would be the objectives? Uh, the objectives for this project is to have uh, good health and well-being of the society, quality of education, sustainable cities, villages, and communities, and climate and environmental actions. So the research aims of this particular center would be to uh, do a kind of quality research so that the sustainable cities, villages, and communications can be designed so that the climate and environmental actions could be established. So basic aim for the technical aim for us is to develop certain technologies for data analysis under the framework of cyber physical system or Internet of Things or IoT. And then deploy these technologies for societal use in the form of innovation and startup companies. Now, next objective for this center is to establish or to develop some skilled human resource development, empower them to develop entrepreneurial skills and capacity building for science and technology in India. So what are the major uh, R&D technologies that we'll be using is data science and big data analysis, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and cognitive computing. These are the four major backbones of research uh, technologies that we will be using for this center. So we will uh, definitely request uh, the Russian partners to have a kind of collaboration in any one of these topics with uh, our uh, innovation hub, which is very recently established. So maybe on data science or maybe on AI or ML or cognitive computing. So what are the deliverables we are aiming to uh, have? is the basic technologies and tools for doing research on these topics. Then uh, do have some kind of patents and journal publications, have uh, different kinds of startups and uh, capacity building. So if I look at what are actually we are going to give is the smart camera-based surveillance system. So these surveillance systems will require a lot of securities, a lot of, lot of securities. So that is where uh, we'll be working at that how to secure the data. Next, what we will be delivering is a medical diagnostics and non-invasive therapeutic system. So since we will be dealing with medical uh, diagnostics or medical data, of course, security is a very big issue. Very important uh, to acquire the privacy. So we will need to have a kind of security issues about establishing uh, the um, privacy of the data. Next, uh, we are to going to have a kind of recommender system for social data analytics. So stock market prediction, uh, then uh, supermarket uh, analysis and all these things. Well, of course, uh, different companies would not like to, uh, est uh, will not like to kind of disclose their strategies. So what we will have to do is, we will have to have the privacy or the data security over here. And uh, the next issue is the IoT-based farming system. Maybe all of us know that India is a uh, agriculture-based country. So 
agricultural system where IoT, the security issue, AI, machine learning, and other things can be used for uh, precision farming is going to be another aspect of our research. So given this backdrop, uh, the cyber physical system that we will be going to develop is smart camera-based surveillance, smart transportation system, then smart medical diagnostics and non-invasive therapeutic system, smart city and villages, and smart agriculture. So since all of these will be involving almost everywhere camera-based system and data analysis, uh, the security issue of all these system is a very important issue. In Indian Statistical Institute, we have a very big group. They are doing uh, research on cryptography, cryptology and security issues uh, led by Professor Bimal Kumar Rai. He was our ex-director. So uh, the Russian groups, uh, if they are willing to uh, have a kind of collaboration with any one of these system uh, where AI, ML or cognitive computing will be using or security issues will be involved, we will be happy to develop a kind of MOU and uh, collaboration. So major collaborations that we are looking for is on machine, artificial intelligence, machine learning, statistics, data analytics and deep learning tools in the respect of uh, cyber security. Okay, so what we are going to develop is uh, the products, publications, IPR, patents, and increase the cyber uh, physical system research base. Technology wise, so I, we are going to have some technology business incubator, startups and spin up companies. Then we are going to have a kind of grand challenges, then dedicated innovation systems, uh, some support system, and job creation. As far as human resource development is concerned, we are going to sponsor a graduate fellowship, postgraduate fellowships, doctoral fellowships, faculty fellowships, chair professor, skill development. So we will be looking for international collaborations on all these topics. So I invite all the Russian partners to have a kind of collaborative effort with uh, our groups on AI or machine learning or data science or big data analysis or statistics and cyber security. We have a very big team of around 10, 11 people working on different aspects of artificial intelligence, machine learning, and cyber security. We have uh, national collaborators. We have a set of international collaborators. So we would like to invite the Russian partners to join on this endeavor. Uh, we have a couple of industries associated with us, the, like a more four specific things, and like Walmart, then SatSure, ShareChat, and Ericsson Research. So maybe uh, the Walmart research and Ericsson research is well known to all of you. Uh, the other two are uh, very local to India. So we have these partners. Uh, in this regard, we have established a small company named Ideas. That's a kind of Section 8 company, which will have uh, at this moment has two directors, uh, myself and our, um, our colleague, Dr. Shangamitra Vandapanthai. So this is a kind of non-profit organization. Uh, so this company will be uh, working in collaboration with other partners for development of artificial intelligence, machine learning, statistics, and data analytics tools for cyber security of IoT-based data. So this was a kind of brief presentation uh, from the technology innovation hubs that India government has established on different aspects. So I thank I you all uh, for your uh, listening and giving me an opportunity to deliver yeah. this. Thank you. Thank you so much. I see you, uh, right now, we have heard to this presentation, but all these presentations uh, will be available on uh, our website. And I believe that the people may have questions and uh, we will contact you again. Thank you. Thank you a lot. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. Большое спасибо. До свидания. Слушайте нас дальше. Stay with us, please. Sure, I'm available. Thank you. Спасибо. Будем обращаться. Слово предоставляется очному участнику. Now we give the floor to our offline participant uh, who is with us here. Pavel Lozhnikov, a doctor of science, a head of chair of Omsk State Technical University. 
He will continue talking on the subjects of artificial intelligence. Uh, this acquires more greater and greater importance for the companies. In fact, it is becoming the integral asset. And according to the projections from an analytical company, I have this slide from IDC Analytics. We see that the growth of global AE market uh, is 16, 17%. It is uh, projected that by the end of this year, the market of artificial intelligence will be approximately uh, $300 and uh, then over 500 uh, billion US dollars. Uh, McKinsey projections are even uh, stronger, and they project that the annual growth uh, of GDP will be 1.2%. This tells us that at present, artificial intelligence is used in all areas of economics, in transportation, healthcare, education, and all kinds of applications and systems that are using artificial intelligence uh, should become more responsible uh, for the use of it and the possible consequences in case of interference in the operation. Uh, in our research, uh, we've been using the notion of uh, protected uh, artificial intelligence. And we understand the impossibility uh, of the following actions by any unauthorized person. First of all, the analysis of operations performed by a impossibility to understand the algorithm, the essence of various transformations. The second is remote control or control by an intruder uh, with the help of all kinds of measurement of algorithm, substitution of data and so on. This should be impossible to extract knowledge from artificial intelligence. Therefore, we believe that in responsible applications, uh, IE must be secure. Why are we working on that? Uh, in our chair of integrated protection of information in our university, we have prepared a dedicated technical report which describes the results of analytical study of various research works and uh, international uh, and domestic standards on security of uh, international uh, intelligence. I will give a link to this report. Let me tell you why we undertaken this work. Uh, we gave uh, the name to our school, Neural Network Algorithms of AE in Protected uh, Implementation. Uh, what we are doing, we are uh, building the neuro system with the use of classificator uh, and the development of neural network algorithms on small samples. Over 20 years period, we have developed the methods and algorithms which are used successfully uh, in image recognition tasks, uh, those which are characterized by the small size of sample. This is, for instance, an application for bio biometric identification by signature. And this is identific identification of psychological and biological uh, parameters, uh, medical parameters. Uh, we have products uh, like sign to login, sign push, uh, which analyzes the dynamics of uh, sig human signature. And we believe that this technology should be used in banking sphere because for over 1,000 years, signature is used as the means of verification in trade and banking. But we know today that other more accurate technologies are being developed in the world 
uh, they do not accept any probability and uh, they uh, have chosen the signs like face and voice. Of course, the accuracy of identification with those technologies would be better, but on the other hand, we will get all the consequences in case of leak of this data. And all information security, as you understand, is based on uh, this type of compromise. And you know that the federal law of 152, even though it exists, but still the leak of personal data uh, at present uh, has reached catastrophic level. And not because the, the law is not complied with, but because of the human nature. Uh, we ourselves leave our personal uh, data uh, in the process of registration and so on, checking in. And you must understand that even using our artificial intelligence, there is a notion of enrichment, uh, consolidation, our ID in mobile phone or mail are present in all kinds of databases. And it is possible to buy those databases in darknet. And in that case, we will learn more and more new information about ourselves uh, from this type of unauthorized databases. And uh, we believe that in future, the same may happen to biometric data. Therefore, when we are using the attributes like signature, we call them uh, democratic biometry. Uh, if your signature is leaked, you may change it and you will have no negative signatures. So these are a few words about, about our platforms. Uh, what I think is the conclusion from this slide is that we had sufficient competence uh, to uh, fulfill this project. Uh, also, our chair has become the educational center of the year in the competition ed educational centers of the year. We got the award this winter uh, for which uh, we are grateful to the organizers of InfoForum. Uh, we've been supporting our research school very seriously in our chair and one more doctoral thesis will be defended soon. Uh, uh, let me continue. Uh, we understand that in future artificial intelligence uh, will generate uh, more and more profit to the companies, and it's becoming a target for the attack. I'll be very brief. The main types of attacks uh, on artificial intelligence, uh, which are known. This is a new concept, uh, but it is very actively discussed in scientific publications. The first uh, is an attack on a decisive bit. Uh, this is uh, consist in uh, trying to test the exits of artificial intellect. And if uh, there are short commands, the intruder uh, may replace the decisive rule. Uh, if at the exit there is a function soft marks, it is uh, sufficient to change places uh, to uh, change the signal like uh, on a traffic light. And the second attack uh, is a key uh, under the rug uh, for artificial intelligence to work in an uh, insecure environment. Uh, its brain would apply encryption. Uh, everything, all transactions, all operations would be encrypted. Uh, for it to function, it is necessary uh, to decipher it. And the parameter of this is a rule would stay unprotected. In theory, in many publications, it has been discussed. Uh, homomorphic uh, encryption could help, but in practice, we are very far from that. We are very far from practical solutions because there are some uh, problems uh, with the lack of productivity and accumulation of errors. And there is one more attack, the so-called competitive uh, attack, uh, when an attacker uh, would uh, send uh, feigned uh, or uh, stolen data in order to get uh, some desired control actions at the exit. So this to this category belongs an attack on extraction of knowledge. This is a 
a type of competitive attack uh, where you could get some useful output from neuron network to understand how artificial intelligence operates in our network we had in our platform uh, we had this type of attack when you activate on graphic uh, pad uh, certain amount of pixels uh, and it is impossible to reproduce the signature in the same way twice. Uh, so uh, if an intruder uh, would catch this package and will try to substitute it, we understand that this hash sum already exists and this will not work. So we see that uh, artificial intelligence is a target of attack. And what we offer to do in this slide i have presented the architectural security of artificial intelligence where we suggest to use the new type of neurons we call them coordination neurons in the right hand part uh, let me say briefly this is a new class of neurons which uh, analyzes only correlation links uh, between the attributes and uh, we may train them in mathematic mode and uh, the standard information in the classes of images for instance biometric images would not be compromised both in uh, storage and implementation uh, modes uh, all this allows us to uh, connect this uh, long cryptographic key to the class uh, of uh, images and the potential length of the key is uh, longer than all known today approaches. These neurons uh, give advantages uh, and uh, help to protect from practically all kinds of attacks, uh, which are known uh, the attacks on artificial intelligence without homomorphic encryption, and also allow us to accelerate education or training of artificial intelligence in new neuron uh, network. Uh, this homomorphic network uh, is uh, available on ResearchGate resource in the nearest future. We will try to prepare the first version of standard uh, secure artificial intelligence. And we also wanted uh, to present it uh, at uh, an uh, expanded meeting of the National Standard Committee, which functions for many years, several years in the Russian Federation. Our main purpose is to move forward for the Russian Federation uh, not to uh, simply translate some international standards, but to be an initiated driver of the process to find our own way. We understand that in artificial intelligence, there are lots of new tasks, um, and the first version uh, will be done for the task of classification, because in that we have gained most of experience and we believe that we are quite competent to do that and probably then move to the international level with that. Uh, thank you for your attention. I believe it was quite interesting. And as I said, this is an issue which we must discuss separately, organize separate conferences on this subject. Uh, the problems are quite interesting, and uh, we believe that they can be addressed quickly. We, you are now even talking about standards. Thank you. It was very interesting. The next presentation, I believe it is ready, uh, is a video presentation. Uh, this is South Africa, a technological university uh, from Cape Peninsula. Dr. Simon Chiu, Chinu, legislative support for digital transformation in South Africa. Many thanks to the organizers Спасибо. of the fourth international conference on information security. And uh, thanks also to the organizers of the session on, uh, on digital transformation and information security. And uh, thanks also to the listeners across the world who are listening to this presentation and to the the, the knowledgeable people across the world who are sharing their knowledge uh, through their presentations 
and discussions on the conference. Uh, the top, my name is Dr. Simon Chino, and the topic I am discussing is legislative support for digital transformation processes in South Africa. So, as the topic is about you know, digital transformation, it is also to understand that digital trans transformation is a process. As a process, it needs to be planned and the planning to take to take account of various environment issues and factors in the organization, including the vision of the company, the resources of the company and its stakeholders, also looking at the employees, their participation, and also at the vision and the service that the company is offering to the stakeholders, mainly the customers. And uh, all of that put together, the company will understand where it is short to ensure that it avoid the downfall of digital transformation. So the content for my presentation, I will be looking at the background. I will be looking at why this presentation, some of the act supporting this transformation according to the local perspective and uh, why is digital transformation necessary to be supported and i will give my conclusion on the topic itself and its background uh, we can understand that digital transformation has its foundation in the development of computer technology and in that development we can see that IT itself has, has been transformed and there is constant innovation in the field of IT itself. And because IT is used to support business operations, as the field itself is dynamic, the adoption of new technology need also to be to be studied and implemented with the spirit of transformation transformation of the business processes that's the key part of it and and um, mainly looking at the component of computer technology itself which is made of hardware software networks database and data even though many of the legislative measures are based on how the camp country is protecting its citizens information but the data is protected because it is stored in certain form or format it is stored on on a device which is a hardware and data which is the life of the company need to be shared among different stakeholders within the organization. So even if these measures are concerning the data, they concern also the tools that are used for the processing and distribution of this data. And as we say that IT is adopted in many industries, business, financial, education institution currently, especially with the, the COVID situation, and these industries have been transformed or disrupted and that bring changes changes in the way they conceive the services and product the way they deliver these services and product to the stakeholders and customers so all of this has brought transformation in general but in south africa certain legal measures or legal act have been enacted by the government among these among these act include the protection of personal information act which is popular which is recently and being implemented uh, it has been enacted which deals with 
the protection of information of the people and this information is data that the company that use as their blood but need to be protected so protected in a way that they must use this data according to the purpose for which it has been used collected for and ensure that it is protected to avoid identification of the people who give the data and there are many other measures others include regulation of interception of communications and provisions of communication related information act which deals with monitoring cyber activities among others the financial intelligence center act which deals with the fraudulent activities especially these financial transactions are also being dealt with online therefore it applies to the way these transfers are done within and outside of the country other measures include electronic communications and transaction act which deals with provision for structures for electronic commerce including the standard to be implemented when engaging in commerce online broadband infraco act which deals with the accessibility of the communications and consumer protection act even though it is not digital itself but consumers need to be protected when they are engaged even online market marketing so this is why the areas even though it is focusing on data and networks but hardware is involved data are processed using technology programs so this act need also they also address the hardware part and um, why government need to bother even about supporting digital transformation is because government has a duty to protect its citizens provide security measures prevent fraud and the privacy of the people all of that is contributing to the economic stabilities of the country and these also are supported or processed using technology so protection of technology in other ways means also protecting the people security of the people privacy of the people preventing of criminal activities and improving economic conditions of the country and because government is also part of business environment therefore it need to support these measures and i have included aspect of regional integration because government deals with countries abroad in this dealing exchange is taking place and this exchange include also exchange of the data and information so whenever these exchanges are being done signed there is also aspect of technology support and digital transformation that need to be considered and uh, in conclusion there are challenges uh, that government will get because government is dealing also with um, stakeholders multinational organizations that operate in different countries they need also to be participating and giving their views on this in conclusion uh, the support of digital transformation is also a way of supporting government and economic attribution economic contributions of of companies because most of these companies use technologies to interact with customers so providing for support mechanisms for digital transformation is a support for economic upliftment and also support for the citizens citizens and providing for securities for the citizen as as they interact with the companies i thank you very much and um, and thanks for listening thanks a lot.
It was very interesting. I am uh, quite sure that the issues of legal regulation are at the basis of cooperation. We will not be able to uh, operate if we do not know what laws regulate our activity in our area, in the countries of BRICS. And I believe that we should uh, collect this information, uh, put it together, uh, and make it available on our website. So this was a contribution of our colleague to this work. We will publish this information. Uh, it is very important to know uh, what track the uh, legal support in UR has taken. Uh, now let us connect to Belarusia again. Uh, we have another speaker from Belarus, Bisoni, a director of Belarusian Institute of Strate Strategic Research, Vladimir Makarov. It's a pity we uh, could not see you here. Uh, we were much willing to do that. Uh, good uh, afternoon, dear colleagues. Thank you for good words. I, in fact, our team and the Institute of Strategic Research uh, wanted to participate offline because this, this is one of the spheres of our research and practical interest. But it happened as happened. And in fact, thanks to technology, this is uh, well to have this opportunity. If you allow me, uh, I will start with my short presentation, if you can hear me well. Thank you, dear colleagues. I would like to continue the topic of legal regulation of issues of IT security and talk about a few theoretical aspects and theoretical and applied aspects. Uh, today, uh, we are proceeding from the fact that in the issues of IT security, uh, they are undergoing very serious transformation. First of all, psychological and theoretic transformation. And if in strategic documents, the documents of strategic planning of previous years or in past generations, uh, we've been talking about the fact that IT threats, the threats on IT sphere and IT sphere as such uh, was a kind of uh, system forming system uh, and deep penetrating system. Today, when we're talking about IT sphere, uh, talking about its strategies, those specialists who are working on strategic planning, uh, foreign leading centers are telling us that the sphere, uh, a sphere of greatest threats and greatest attack. And today, IT security is becoming not just a fashion, but also uh, a standalone sphere of uh, particular attention of the military uh, sector, researchers, government, and so on. We had the formulation that information environment is an environment through uh, which uh, government may be attacked, uh, where people may be induced uh, to uh, mistreat the government to start riots. Uh, and so we are telling today that IT sphere uh, from a benefit is becomes a sphere of uh, realization, uh, actualization of major threats. It is not for nothing that at the level of NATO, uh, they are making a decision to equalize cyber threats to real life. Uh, threats. Uh, I'm not in a position uh, to uh, give a, an estimate or assessment of such decisions, but I may understand their uh, motivation, underlying reason. In addition, we wanted to say that uh, causes and consequences have changed. Uh, the causes and consequences uh, which would describe the background or the environment for cyber attacks. If formerly we were talking uh, that uh, an environment or the background for uh, IT attacks uh, implementation uh, where uh, the trust within us uh, of the people, lack of awareness, uh, lack of literacy, uh, dependencies, and so on. But now the accent has changed. Now we say 
uh, that uh, the uh, intrusion, malicious actions would form this low critical threshold in the people's perception. They would form uh, the consumer uh, needs, low-grade needs in society, deformation of false opinions, appeal to emotions, to subconscious, and so on. So today, while formerly we believed uh, that the citizen uh, were generally uh, could be blamed for the fact that they were affected because they were too naive and too trustworthy. But now we say that this is a result uh, of malicious attacks uh, on national heritage, historical memory, and so on. I wanted to remind you that we are on the eve of a tragic date, the beginning of the Great Patriotic War, and already now we see uh, the effect of attacks on historical memory, the attempts to destroy the basics of the national spiritual values, and then attempts to destroy those values by, by information effects and substitution of those values. I am not going to talk long about that, but nonetheless, there are very clear signs uh, of attempts to review uh, the circumstances of the beginning of World War II and Great Patriotic War and review uh, the perception of the outcomes of World War II and our perception uh, of victory uh, into the uh, feeling uh, of uh, uh, fault. Um, uh, this is not a subject for today's uh, meeting, but I wanted to draw your attention to this. Uh, and uh, the narratives uh, which we saw uh, for the anniversary of 75th anniversary of the victory, this was the attempt to shift uh, the memory to post-war uh, anti-communist movement in Europe. Uh, this example tells us that today uh, we need some understanding of what are we supposed to do with this uh, diversified effect uh, and what should be our response. From, the, uh, from our point of view, we believe that uh, today it would uh, difficult uh, to build a concept uh, we, uh, when we are trying to list uh, the uh, relevant threats. Uh, this approach with threats matrix uh, would have been good in a stable situation. Uh, but when these concepts uh, are changing and reviewed with a periodicity of five to ten years and the threats uh, are staying uh, valid. Today we see that the situation is accelerating and these concepts would become dated very quickly and the matrix uh, would uh, lose uh, its uh, actuality. What response can we give to that? It's difficult to give a recipe, but I wanted to draw your attention to the strategy of uh, information security of uh, CIS countries, where we have implemented the principle of legal status of security. This was an attempt to build a system which would be more adaptive, more flexible where we could talk about the status of the subject of security, and this is individuality in the state, and talking about security of the state, we are proceeding from the definition of this legal status as information sovereignty. This is a very fashionable uh, notion, a word of the day, many people are talking about it, but uh, we may here, have a look at who was the first to introduce it. Uh, it was first introduced in this uh, concept of uh, IT security of the Republic of Belarus. And we also explained what we had in mind. Uh, what we had in mind in information sovereignty, that was a capability of the state to implement its information policy without external interference. Uh, of course, 
uh, we could be skeptical about that from the point of view of technical capability. How are you capable to ensure that? But as some kind of theoretical and legal uh, goal, I believe this is quite a plausible uh, construction. And talking about information sovereignty, in our understanding, this is the goal. Uh, which in future could be implemented by a, a system of measures and the measures could be changed depending uh, on the type of threats and our capabilities, financial and other. I also wanted to draw your attention to one of the points uh, which in our understanding is quite important today. Another point which is also very important is the understanding of the fact that the state, independent state, Again, it could be called the critics of information security. Uh, will not be able to ensure information security because uh, of uh, the uh, transparency and openness of borders when IT threats can penetrate through the national borders. Uh, we are the partners of various initiatives in that regard. First of all, the uh, initiatives of the Russian Federation uh, related to the promotion of an idea that IT security cannot be achieved in one isolated country or region. When we're talking about IT security, first of all, we are talking about legal norms, uh, which would create uh, regimes or uh, conditions for security on a global level. Uh, here we are, in, from that uh, point of view, we are participating in the open work group uh, within the UN structure. And again, I wanted to say that we support Russian initiatives, which are very timely and very principled. Uh, what uh, is the main issue for discussion and the main problem uh, within that uh, UN work group? in the sphere of IT security. Uh, main issue is in the theoretical uh, capability, conceptual capability of society to formulate at this stage the legal norms of which should be implemented in IT sphere to ensure IT security. Of course, if we appeal to the Roman law and the development of classical law, uh, which took hundreds of years to be formed, uh, it is very difficult to write a new code of uh, rules and mechanism of behavior within several years and to make it acceptable by all civilizations is a very ambitious task. On the other hand, we've seen that, in fact, today, uh, the issue of development or the system of international global IT security uh, is uh, the uh, conflict of two legal systems, Anglo-Saxon and uh, Roman uh, law. This is not just opposition by the line Russia West or Russia US, but this is an opposition of two uh, law families. Uh, when the case law is not necessarily uh, norm, and it cannot fill in all the niches uh, with the precedents, with the case solutions. Uh, while in the classical system, Roman law, it is necessary to have standard fixed rules and norms of behavior. In that connection, we are promoting the following positions. Uh, we believe that at the basis of international cooperation, uh, we must have a goal or a concept of information sovereignty of states. And the next concept must be the understanding of globality or threats in uh, informational environment and threats to individuals by IT environment. And in that connection, we need international cooperation. In addition, Pillar Russia promotes the term of information and neutrality. But we wanted to draw your attention and explain a little bit. Because what we mean by that, when we were talking and are talking about information neutrality, we do not mean that we want to get away from this sphere. Uh, we say that we would like to avoid 
militarization of informational space and avoid militarization of the goals and purposes of digitalization and development IT services. Uh, by analogy with the fact uh, that uh, Belarus has refused uh, to deploy nuclear weapons in its territory, we wanted to say that Belarus at least tries to promote the initiative and self-limited uh, to assume the responsibility not to develop uh, the IT uh, means and tools which can be used as weapons. We also believe that it is necessary uh, to promote trust measures in the sphere of international security and the level of confidence. We are also very much confirmed, concerned uh, about uh, the subject of automatic application of rules of uh, humanitarian law to communication sphere because we believe that even psychological uh, connection or time of humanitarian sphere to war and to military sphere uh, where humanitarian law could be used further uh, would be psychological risks of acceptance of this possibility. We believe that IT sphere is a sphere of peaceful relationship development and development of various law enforcement systems, non-military. Ideally, uh, we believe that we as a small state uh, would not be protected by force. We could be protected only by law. Therefore, we would appeal not to military power. We do not have cyber attacking uh, divisions or departments or command centers in Belarus. We uh, wanted to believe that we would be protected and defended by law and policing structures, law enforcement structure. Uh, and uh, we also wanted to say a few words about the fact that today it is very important in IT sphere to address the task of IT security, to involve more actively research uh, community, to organize all kinds of conferences because this sphere is changing so quickly that we are lagging behind in forming the system of security, which would match the development of the technologies and threats uh, which are being developed in parallel with the development of informatization um, uh, problems. Uh, also, we wanted to say that we have taken the uh, route of building regional system of security, uh, though, again, we are for global approach for the support of Russian initiative to develop global conventions in the sphere of IT security. Nonetheless, in the sphere of regional approaches, we have plenty of successes. I already talked about IT security of CIS countries. Uh, quite recently, we have signed an agreement uh, on uh, CSTO countries uh, agreement in the sphere very long ago, as you know, we have signed similar agreements agreement uh, by SEO members, uh, which uh, was a start of a whole family uh, of similar agreements. Uh, we believe that uh, this is a field uh, for work, further work uh, within the framework uh, of the uh, United States uh, or Union State of Belarus and Russia. And I wanted to say that in Belarus, we are working on building the legal system and adaptation of legal system. We are working actively on that. We have adapted the concept of information security of our republic. We are actively working on the change of our criminal and administrative codes uh, related to the development of IT technologies and new threats. And this year, as you know, uh, we had a very serious political event. And this is the sixth uh, Belarusian uh, People's Congress. And by the results of which, we have formulated a complex of measures, several approaches that would allow us to develop securely. Uh, let me just list uh, them. First of all, we 
the intent to ensure the wide representation of government position on the internet and the development of that sector. Second, we believe that to ensure IT security and ensure, uh, among others, the social aspects and others, we need to further development of feedback channels and involvement, wider involvement of the population by means of telecommunication systems into the uh, solution of uh, government uh, problems. Uh, third, we believe that cyber, cyber crime problems is getting a priority. Our stat criminal statistics, uh, criminological statistics uh, tells us about that. Uh, and uh, we uh, must respond to them. Moreover, we need to build modern understanding of all the uh, public threat and national threat from the new actions uh, and redraw all the red lines which we had before. And at the basis of that, we must have the advanced development of technology in the sphere of informatization, which would allow us to improve the quality of everyday life. Also at that conference, we raised the subject uh, of developing of the concept of national security of the Republic of Belarus. It was not updated over the past 10 years and within the context of uh, uh, protection for threats in the uh, informational sphere. This is about all that I wanted to share with you in this brief presentation. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Alex Sergeyevich. Uh, our connection was very good, and the presentation was strategic, fundamental in nature. Thank you for that. And I do hope that you will share with us some text version of it, which we could publish on our website. Thank you. And now we invite the Brazilian speaker. That's an important uh, presentation, which would show the BRICS. Uh, that we are all together, and this is the level of Minister of the Communications, uh, Mr. Vitor Alicia Gores de Oliveira Menezes. Distinguished participants at the International uh, Conference, ladies and gentlemen, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone. I would like to begin by saying what an honor. It is to join you here today for this international conference on information security. I believe this event is an excellent opportunity for us to take a look at some of these challenges we face in the digital environment as we become ever more connected in the economy, in government, and in society. In Brazil, we have a connected society. With approximately 80% of the population online, the country ranks 50 globally. Brazil also ranks third in terms of average daily use of internet per person. As you may know, Brazil with a total population of over 210 million has approximately 85% of citizens living in urban areas. The country has a territory of 8.5 million square kilometers and 5,570 municipalities. Despite these challenges, we are making significant progress in expanding network infrastructure and providing connectivity all over the country. This infrastructure will support our national digital transformation strategy that we are currently implementing. We have taken a role of government approach to digital transformation to take full advantage of this opportunity to increase productivity and competitiveness in the economy provide better government services and increase digital inclusion in society. The Brazilian digital transformation strategy is based on nine pillars, which include network infrastructure, capacity building, and trust in the digital environment. All this is aimed at creating a data-driven economy, where the Internet of Things, big data, and artificial intelligence provide the tools to maximize the benefits of the digitalization. Brazil has selected four key priority areas to advance this transformation to digital economy 4.0 by massively deploying the Internet of Things. 
agriculture, industry, health, and smart cities. In order to implement this strategy, expanding network infrastructure is absolutely essential. Working with telecommunication services providers is br in Brazil, we have been able to ensure the robust, secure, accessible, and resilient operation of telecommunications, network, and digital infrastructure. Today, all municipalities in Brazil have mobile coverage in the urban areas with 4G services, and 95% of them Eden, and the remaining with at least 3G service. The most recent numbers show that over 81% of households have either fixed or mobile broadband services subscriptions. Internet use in, in homes is also noticeably gender balanced in Brazil with 79% of women and girls and 77 of men and boys using the internet. In terms of international broadband connectivity, Brazil continues to expand its network of internet exchange points, with a highlight on the city of Fortaleza, which has become a major hub for submarine cables. The city now hosts landing stations and data centers for 15 cables, providing direct connections to North and South America, as well as new direct links to Europe and to Africa. The upcoming 5G Spectrum auction, which takes place this year, will offer a spectrum in four different harmonized frequency bands, allowing for competitive bidding in both national and regional blocks, suitable for a wide range of new applications. This is expected to attract not only the major players, but also a number of smaller regional players, which can greatly impact economy uh, development. This spectrum auction will also provide the opportunity to extend coverage of at least 4G servers to hundreds of districts and villages with a population above 600 inhabitants, as well as seamless coverage on federal highways, expanding significantly territorial coverage. Another area of expansion in Brazil is in fiber connectivity infrastructure. Today, over 4,000 500 municipalities are connected to the national backbones via, uh, via fiber, fiber backhaul currently covering 96% of total population. We have put a public policy priority on extending fiber optics or other types of high capacity backhaul to remaining municipalities in Brazil as an essential infrastructure element to support high quality fixed and mobile broadband services. As well, an existing federal government program to provide broadband internet access to all public schools has been a priority and a critical element to develop digital skills. To ensure that we continue to bridge the digital divide, we have similarly continued to expand satellite connectivity to rural public schools. This specific program utilizes KA-band uh, KA-band satellite capacity in the Brazilian Communications and Defense Air Stationary Satellite, which provides full territorial coverage with broadband connectivity and internet service. This satellite is a key infrastructure providing digital inclusion in rural and remote unserved areas, ensuring that no one is left behind. Nonetheless, ensuring the pillar of the trust in the digital environment in our digital transformation strategy presents significant significant challenges. In our approach to implement trust involves both privacy and data protection, but also very importantly, security in the digital environment. Given the critical role that 5G networks will have in digital transformation in many sectors of the economy, there is a global concern over the protection of this critical infrastructure. In Brazil, we have a specific national policy for the security of critical infrastructure, which among other aspects also aims at protecting telecommunications critical infrastructure as part of a wider approach to the protection of network security. The country is also implementing the recent national cybersecurity strategy, which includes strengthening governance, protecting cri critical infrastructure and enhancing robust coordination in incident treatment and response. Brazil has established a set of objectives aimed at increasing resilience, 
reliability and security in the digital environment for government, for economy, and for society. This includes enhancing the legal framework supporting innovation and increasing domestic partnership. Importantly, we, we focus as well at increasing international cooperation. The Telecommunications Regulatory Agency, ANATEL, has also issued regulations with requirements to reduce vulnerability both in hardware and software, including an enhanced cryptography for the, for the transmission and storage of data. In 2020, e-commerce sales in Brazil grew at a rate of over 70%. This was the same year in which our central bank deployed a national instant payment system called PIX, which integrates all banks and financial institutions with their entire customer base of business and individuals, and currently generates over 400 million transactions every month. As well, during the current pandemic, the federal government created emergency aid, which is, which is a financial assistance for informal workers, the self-employed, and the unemployed. The beneficiaries registered by phone, internet, or using a mobile phone app. This electronic payment system has benefited over 109 million people and became one of the most important digital and banking inclusion initiatives in our country. Indeed, these challenging times have accelerated our move towards the digital environment. This requires as well, increasing international cooperation in the digital sphere. I wish to note the fact that we recently commissioned two OECD peer reviews entitled Telecommunication and Broadcasting Review of Brazil and Going Digital in Brazil, which have highlighted our telecommunication policies and our national digital transformation strategy. Importantly, we strongly support the activities of the annual meeting of the BRICS ministries Ministers of Communications. In this forum, we have strived to implement with our partner countries the BRICS Institute of Future Networks. As well, we are active members of the G20 Digital Economy Task Force, an important forum for continued discussion on digital issues and to seek common ground wherever possible. We have also advanced the digital agenda at the regional level, both our at our Mercosur group of countries that closely cooperate and, and at the ELEC, initiative that encompass, encompasses a wider group in Latin America and the Caribbean. Finally, we, I would like to mention that within the United Nations system, we view the Internet, the International Telecommunications Union, ITU, as an essential forum for cooperation on telecommunications, internet and digital issues. Thank you for your attention. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, we all understand that this is a huge work. Thank you for finding time in Brazil. And the head of ministry has prepared this very solid and interesting uh, presentation. Thanks a lot. This was our short travel across the world. And we understand uh, that it was not for nothing because different countries have different positions and all together uh, we are acting as one team, despite the fact that physically we are located far away from each other. Thank you all participants. I thank uh, our technical uh, support, our interpreters who help us throughout this long marathon, but our marathon, the Info Forum, will continue in 15 minutes. We will have another panel and then uh, another till uh, late in the night. I believe that we will discuss lots of interesting topics. Uh, thank you all. Our panel is closed. <laughs>